This week you are going to be introduced to building models. So what you're going to do is you're going to take each of your four quadrants and you're going to turn these into four relief models. These are going to be very similar to the exercises that we do in class. You should allow four to six hours to complete this assignment. So understand that the fields that you've now added to your figures can do many things. One, as in the first example, they can extend. Number two, they can reflect. Number three, they can envelop. Number four, they can surround or overlap. They can balance and they can also define. So you should start to think about what your fields are doing to your figures and what the relationship between the two is. Two is, is, is building a very simple model. So here you can see an illustration of this. This is just a plan view of what that is. You will need to determine what are going to be your major horizontal lines and your contrasting perpendicular line because you're going to be building the two prominent horizontal lines as vertical walls and then you're going to choose one that will be perpendicular to those. In this example you can see that the perpendicular line is actually relating the figure back to the field by bringing out the midpoint of the field and its relationship with the figure. These are the instructions for building those three-dimensional figures. So it shows you the height of those and then how it will sit in the card. This is an example, so on the left you can see that you're going to be cutting a hole where the figure goes out of your base. You're going to be building the field, the yellow field. You're going to be representing it, representing it as another layer of mu museum board on top of the card. And then the figure will be built out of museum board and actually built up with those three vertical walls and a horizontal plane that will replace the base. Another view of what that looks like. And another view. Now some of your cards are going to have multiple figures built on them. This example only shows one figure. Some of your cards will have up to three. Again, this is what the built up figures will look like. It is up to you where you situate this inside the base. So you may have the plane here, the horizontal plane that's at the base. You may have that underneath the base. It may be even with the base or it might even be slightly higher. And again, some more illustrations of those three dimensional figures that you will be building. They're composed of three vertical walls, two that are dominant, and then a horizontal base. These are, these are examples of student examples. These are also available on Canvas if you look at the assignment. Again, you can see that each of these figures is composed of three vertical planes, two dominant planes, and then one that runs perpendicular to those. It is up to you which ones you choose to do this with. So the one in the top left, the Two dominant planes are actually on the short ends of the figure, and then the perpendicular plane runs in the longest direction. For this assignment, you're going to invert this process, and we are going to go from building the model to making a drawing of it. So. Um, so you'll, you'll start to see that in architecture, it's really important for us to move between drawings and models, and we need to go back and forth. It's never, we're going to do the drawings, and then we're going to do the model. You really should be doing some drawings, then a model, then some more drawings, then another model. You might even start with a model. There will be a couple of um, instances this year where you actually will start with the model, but this one is taking it back to drawing. So this, pro this assignment is composed of four drawings. The first is a, um, is a plan drawing of your figures on a piece of um, 
heavy drawing paper. Please note that before you make the drawing, you actually are going to be taking your four quadrants and you're going to put them together. So it's up to you how you orient them. The entire eight by 12 organization should be vertical um, and you should choose the, the which, which of your compositions go in which quadrant. I would encourage you to choose one of your, uh, one of your compositions to go with so that they are all related. You should illustrate the existing relief as tonal elements. So you can sort of see that here in the top right. And you should tone both figure and field as values. So this will be related to an in-class exercise that we do. But you can see here how the grays are toned where the yellow fields are located. Where they overlap each other or where they overlap figures, that gray gets darker. After you complete the tonal drawing, you're going to complete the following three drawings as 8 by 12 overlays, much like we've been doing during class where you use the trace as an overlay to develop an idea. So in order to continue the development of the compositions, you will need to evaluate the conditions of order present in each composition. As they stand, the regulating lines have played a very important role in, det in determining the size and placement of both your figures and fields. Therefore, the subsequent, cha subsequent changes to the compositions will continue to relate to those regulating lines. The following three drawings that you're going to do on the trace paper will analyze these compositions using grain, dominant gestures, and will eventually be interpreted as yet another layer on the ground or site, much like the previous fields. First, you should consider grain in your individual compositions, specifically amplifying the grain in each quadrant. So here, you can see in figure three in this example, the grain dominant gestures focus on each quadrant as individual compositions. You will only draw the four outlines on your overlay. So here you can see the underlying plan that was drawn from the model. And then you can see these rectangular outlines that also are on top of those. And these are the grain dominant gestures of each quadrant. Second, you will consider the grain in each quadrant as part of the overall composition. In this overlay, overlay, evaluate the relationships that connect each quadrant to the whole. What grain dominant gestures can be added in each quadrant to better relate with the other quadrants? As before, draw four outlined fields which define each quadrant into two or three distinct parts or sub subdivisions. So in figure four, you will see four other rectangular outlines that talk about the grain dominant gestures trying to bring the four quadrants together. In the bottom of that, you can see these are symmetrical. In the top, they're also very related to each other. And then third, you're going to create a synthesis overlay. So on the third sheet of trace paper, you're going to bring all of these ideas together in a final composition. You should pay attention to individual quadrants as well as the whole composition. Again, draw four outline fields which divide each quadrant into two or three distinct parts or subdivisions. Please know that in each of these steps on each of the trace paper overlays, the outlines should span the entire quadrant either horizontally or vertically, and each outline will be orthogonal. The objective of this assignment is to further develop the texture and complexity of the ground plane or the site as befits both the individual elements and the ensemble. You're trying to bring your four quadrants that have always been separate together into one composition. That is the point of this assignment. So in this assignment, there's one 8x12 drawing on heavy paper, and there are three 8x12 vellum trace overlays. These should be, um, the heavy paper can be Bristol paper. It can also be uh, hot press watercolor paper. So in order to do well in this assignment, I would encourage you to practice your tone making skills before beginning the drawings, particularly the overlapping of planes. You should study the examples. You should make sketches before each overlay to clarify your intent. You can use your sketchbook to do so. 
You should allow time to make multiple versions of each overlay to make sure that you have the one that you want to present. Consider grain, boundary, and axis in determining the division. Craft line weight with due diligence and maintain notes of your process. So these are just some examples of this project. So you can see here the yellow is simply just to show you um, so, it's, so it's clear to you what you're looking at. But in the top left is the original composition and to the right of that this is where you might do an overlay before you even begin this exercise where you're understanding the relationship of the axes and how those start to relate between quadrants. The composition on the bottom left, individual grain dominant gestures shown as outline on the left, and I'm sorry that outline's a little light, and an analysis of its axes shown with collage overlays on the right for visual clarity. So here you can sort of see that there are these, um, these relationships between the center line, the axes, and these added grain dominant gestures. Again, this is the composition with grain dominant with, with grain dominant gestures shown as outline and as analysis of axes shown with collage overlays on the right. You will not be using the collage overlays. You will simply be doing this with line weight. So I would encourage you to have the outlines of your grain dominant gestures darker than the other lines on your sheet. If you would like to bring out these axes in your analyses, that is fine. So this is a handout um, just so you can sort of start to understand the relationship between fields and figures. So in the figure one, grain can balance a composition. In figure two, grain can subdivide and bound. Grain three uh, can border and reapportion. And finally, grain can surround and extend, and I'm sure it can do a lot of other things as well. You should try to understand what your grain dominant gestures are doing to the compositions as well. So grain defines the direction of the ground. In this sense, it acts as part of the setting for the figure ground composition. As a separate and discrete element acting directly with the ground, it modifies the inherent gestalt of the entire composition. It mates and takes sides. Defined Grain elements like those shown in the handout augment, subdivide, or alter the ground condition. In these demonstrations, the elements cross the entire ground either horizontally and vertically, touching either two or three edges of the composition. Some basic grain tactics appear in the examples. Once again, they represent intentional formal groupings. These are some more examples of the grain dominant gestures and their relationship with the existing figures and fields. Again, some other examples. And then this is the synthesis. And you can see how some ideas from each of the previous overlays are brought together here. These are student examples showing that initial uh, drawing that you will need to do. Um, the lines here are pretty light, but you can see how you should be drawing your figures in plan, showing us which vertical planes are, are brought out in the model, and then how you would shade those. And then these are images of those overlays. So here on the overlay, all you need to be drawing are four rectangles on each one. This is showing the underlay with the trace paper on top. So you will have three pieces of trace paper with four rectangles each. In our next class, or in the next lecture, we will be talking about constructing axonometric drawings. And this is where this project is headed.